Oh, Glenn, it is so good to have you on Live in the Hive. And you're in your dressing room, aren't you? Uh, I'm actually in the company manager's office today instead, yeah. So um, I thought I'd save, I wouldn't show you where the magic happens just yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> is, is that only for the special people? It's very messy, very messy, my dressing room. It's carnage in there. It's covered in blood and confetti and, yeah, we've got two weeks worth in there now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I can imagine. I came to see the show last week. It is absolutely phenomenal a phenomenal moment <laughs> <laughs> i even got my words out and that excited um of course i'm talking about bat out of hell the musical you're at the opera house in manchester how does it feel to be starring in this show as the rebel strat you're the leading man glenn i am yeah i still pinch myself every day really um yeah, I mean, it feels amazing. It feels especially amazing after everything we've been through over the last 18 months. Obviously, we started, we were two weeks in when lockdown first hit. So it, I always say it was sweet before, but it's twice as sweet now. Yeah, it really feels, um, we all feel so lucky. We're all so blessed to be here. And it's a show that I really love and I've loved for a long time. I really, really wanted this show. Uh, and you are absolutely perfect for the role of Strat because he is just the ultimate rocker. And when you get on that stage, the energy that comes from you is absolutely incredible. Now, we're talking about, you know, it's quite a long show. We've got epic songs, the songs of Jim Steinman and Meatloaf that are longer than the usual three <laughs> minutes you know yeah, how do you sense. keep that energy going because i imagine what eight shows a week uh yeah i do six yeah i do six shows a week but yeah eight eight seven shows of the cast do but yeah it's full on i say um bat of hell the actual song as the end of that one is a marathon we always say it's a marathon you know you've got to really build up to it and it goes for yeah, eight and a half minutes i think and it's jumping off the bike jumping off the rocks jumping through fire covering in blood it's very uh I, you do come off like oh wow that's a workout and a half <laughs> uh well we can see all the cast there jumping behind there is lots and lots of excitement that goes on here's you on the bike there with the bat out of hell number can you can you actually ride a motorbike <laughs> no no i can't which you might be able to notice sometimes <laughs> you keep thinking how do i start this thing where's the ignition where's the key uh but uh no i don't no i would love to but i think i'm I, i'd be terrible i'm so clumsy I can barely ride a push bike without falling off so well i'm glad that wasn't one of the remits of getting the part <laughs> and uh, you know you bag the part unbelievably yeah, well what, what was it like that audition process back then um obviously you said you love the show already so mm. i imagine there was quite a lot of nerves involved but mm. how did it feel to be you know up for that role yeah amazing i was i just finished doing american idiot which is the green day musical at mm. the time and it was very sort of similar like i was very much in the rock uh world at the time and actually i wore parts of my costume i took them out of the theater from american idiot and thought you know i'm just gonna wear all this rock merch that i've got now um and went in and yeah it was really intense and sort of just i just rocked out basically for them and loved it and knew the show but then towards the end they brought me and martha together martha who plays raven and uh, we sang for crying out loud which you'll have seen in the show we did that together uh, on the very last day for all the producers, all the, the director, the MD, the musical supervisor. And I think when we came together was the first time I thought, actually, I feel like this is right, this combo. Obviously, the whole time I've been thinking, I'm not going to get this. Like, there's amazing people in for it. But when we came together, I thought the chemistry between us felt really good. We both left and were like, wow, actually, that was, that was quite special to have in an audition room. Uh, you've got to have that fusion because mm. that is really central to the story you know you've mm. got Strat he's the rebel he's the leader of the lost boys the lost I say the lost boys because it really <laughs> does resonate like uh, yeah, you know, it's it's Peter mentally. Pan feel about it hasn't yeah. it really um and you being you know the Peter Pan forever young um and Martha as well playing Raven is your love interest mm. who is 
from this straight-laced family. She's got this draconian kind of dad, Falco, mm -hmm. um, and this <laughs> Sloan, I've got to say, played by Sharon Sexton, is just the most hilarious character no, as kind it. of a mom in, in, the, in the role, Glenn. Um, but it does rely on those sparks flying between you mm. and Martha as Raven. And, and if you've got that, I suppose that was just it. Yeah, there's a lot of trust between the two of you and sort of the physical aspect of the show is that if one, when we do a number, they'll say if one moves, the other one has to counter it. Like you're always connected throughout. So it's quite, you have to really sort of trust each other and get on with each other, I think, to sort of create that and have that connection, which we did have from sort of as soon as we met, I think. So I think that's quite special to the show, yeah. Now, I know I tried to describe the show then. It is quite a difficult show to describe, mm -hmm. though, because it's kind of like a little bit of everything. I mean, there's so much drama in there. There's a lot of humour. How would you describe it for anyone who's not come to see it yet? Oh, I think I'd describe it as just a massive party. Like, it is just a great night out. And also, I think we always say that pre-pandemic, sort of pandemic, everyone would think, well, this is far-fetched, isn't it? It's a world where Raven is locked in her house. She's not been allowed out for sort of the last 18 years. And she's looked out on the world and been like, what's that like? And there's no physical contact between her and anyone else. And then you've got all these people that have sort of infected with this virus that has made them stay forever young. But now we, when we came to rehearsals this time, I think it was Sharon and Rob that were like, suddenly it doesn't feel so far-fetched, does it? Suddenly we're like, actually, this has happened. <laughs> so um, it's, it's not gone the way that we all stay forever young, if only. But uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> but it's but it's sort of not as as out there anymore. So story wise, it sort of rings a lot truer, I think, than it than it ever did. Um, I just think, but the music is so good. Like it's just every song, night after night, you just people go crazy for it, and just in the same way I would. But Absolutely. it's amazing. Well I think it is probably the best time to take a look at you in action. Uh, we'll take a look at the trailer because this music is incredible. for the show tonight that i'm like oh it looks great doesn't it <laughs> fabulous absolutely fantastic you mentioned kind of the fans there um you must have super bat fans who come and yeah. see it now <laughs> tonight yeah yeah the bat fam oh they're so loyal to it they love it there's something about this show that sort of really resonates with people and um and they find it and they come back night after night and it's just amazing how much they love the show and so i think we feel a lot of responsibility towards them to keep it you know as 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 big a spectacle as it was when it was at the dominion or everywhere else it's been throughout the world so even though this is a touring version and you can't have shows as big and grand as they are in town when you've got to take them to all these different theatres. But we tried to still keep it feeling massive, which for me as a touring show, you still look at the set and you're like, wow, for a touring show, this is massive. This feels amazing, yeah. It's so impressive. I mean, mm. you've got the bikes, you've got the fire, like you said, you've got the cannons, you've got these amazing big screens on there yeah. and an onstage camera person that kind of mm. captures the action in it. And it almost feels like a music video at some time. Yeah. It is. It's as epic <laughs> as Simon and, and Meatloaf songs. It, it really, yeah. really is. And talking about Jim Steinman, I know he passed in earlier this year. Yeah. So this tour is dedicated to him, isn't it? Um, yeah. 
that that must be quite difficult for some of the people on tour because I imagine did you meet Jim Steinman? Did because you've got the original cast members Sharon Sexton yeah. and, and Rob Falco, uh, Rob mm. Rob Fowler who plays Falco. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, has that been more poignant? Yeah, I mean, obviously they worked with him before, and I know when we were in rehearsals for it pre-pandemic, a lot of this stuff would be filmed and shared with Jim, and we would talk about sort of what he had said and i think now certainly the song rock and roll dreams um in act two in the show that's set up as if it's for tink on behalf of where the plot has gone for his character and we sing that to him but actually the way we look at it now is that that every night is sort of a tribute to jim and we um and so there's a lot that resonates in that song for us now where we're, we're doing it for the plot, but we are really doing it, you know, as a tribute to Jim every night, that that particular song. And, uh, you know, just trying to stay as true to his music as possible now, rather than, rather than, you know, a lot of shows you'll go and see, people have the dots, but they will ad lib around the music. We're very much now trying to be like, this is how Jim intended it to be sung. This is how we'll sing it night after night for him. You know. And what a legacy. I mean, yeah, the songs, the show. Uh, mm. I heard as well, and, and I think you, you just mentioned it then, about he used to watch, like, streams of it every night, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it was just his baby completely. Yeah, the musical was always the dream before, sort of. I mean, that was how it became Battle of Hell. He, the musical was called The Dream Engine, and he lost the rights to the script of Peter Pan at the time. So they had to release it as Battle of Hell concept album, with me like but originally it was always intended that's why the songs are so theatrical he'd always sort of intended to put them in a musical about peter pan and so they always say at least you know before he went his dream was finally a reality because it's like i th oh, god it must be in the 60s 70s when that happened i think actually yeah. someone shared with us the original audition post that he'd put out way back when looking for the cast for the show and uh it was incredible great. Yeah, absolutely amazing. And he'd put on there, you know, I don't want this to be one of those boring musicals that are currently on Broadway, you know. He'd write this whole thing about what he intended. And, yeah, so I think we're really trying to do this for him. Yeah. If that doesn't give the message to people out there to never give up, I don't know what does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Amazing. I mean, now, the musical, his legacy, yeah, amazing. Have you had any words from Meatloaf? No, but I know that obviously Sharon and Rob have, and he, he loved it way back when. Yeah, when it was in town, I know that he had said to them he didn't know sort of how they were going to make a song like uh, Anything for Love. You know, I would do anything for love, but I wouldn't do that. He didn't know how they were going to put that into a show, and then when he came and saw it, he was like, wow, that just made sense, you know, the, exactly the way you sort of made sense of those songs. I think these songs, they lend so well to theatre. It doesn't feel like they're forced into it. They do have a narrative to them anyway as songs. So I think, yeah, I think it was impressive for him to see that. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. It must be good for you being back in the north, though. I know you trained at Lipper, didn't you? So, yeah. is it is it great to kind of see where you first started out? Oh, I love it up here. All of this sort of M62 corridor for me is like Manchester, Leeds, Liverpool. It's all sort of this is where I feel most comfortable. Um, I did try and stay in Liverpool for as long as possible and then I moved to Leeds for a bit and I lived in Manchester for a bit but eventually I just had to go, I was spending so much in trains that I thought I've just got to go down now uh, but yeah this does, these are the venues that I get most excited about always sort of doing Manchester, Liverpool, I love doing Sheffield as well, they love their rock shows sort of that end so um yeah for me the north i'm showing everyone we have great audiences we do. Yeah, we do everyone's so much more vocal here and i love that everyone's friendly aren't they really friendly up north <laughs> well i know that you're on stage tonight that's why we can't have you live in the hive and i'm loving the fact we're getting some of the noise from the speakers and we've yeah. got this feeling that it's all happening in the theater <laughs> you know wow um have you got any pre-show ritual that you do or you or the cast do because i always wonder you know what it's like just before you kind of go on and how you get mm. that level of energy oh uh, do you know what i um We'll do a cast warm up together and we'll all do that and we'll get pumped. And then in my dressing room, I will play Bon Jovi before the show always because that's sort of, they're my favourite band. Favourite so, track? 
Uh, oh, well, it depends really on the vibe, but probably I'd play It's My Life or Living on a Prayer. You know, I'll be playing that always, though. Just before I go on, I'll play it always. And oh. I'll, it's actually the song that I sang for my bat audition, was Always by Bon Jovi. It was my first yeah. song. So well, that's I'll a play, good look plan. Yeah, so I'll play that. And while I'm having that, I'll be really rock and roll and drink a cup of tea with some honey in it, just like Elvis. <laughs> That's an Elvis trick. Elvis used to do that, so I do that. I'll edit that bit out, you know. Yeah, because it might have ruined my street cred. He told me it was like some whiskey. <laughs> uh, so it's a, oh, if it works for Elvis, it works for me, Michelle. Of course it does. You've got to take it from the king, and yeah, you certainly did. rock out there, so it's definitely working. Um, <laughs> you know what? Thank you so much. Rock yeah, on for the rest of the tour. Yeah, and it good. was thrilling to see you action, and everybody should go and see it. It runs at the uh, Opera House now until the 2nd of October, but then you're off continuously, aren't you? So uh, you've got a yeah. long time to rock, Glenn. We've got a long time, 16 months, so come and catch us somewhere, please. Absolutely. Well, you take care. We'll see you, you soon. Too. Thanks, Michelle.